Hello people and welcome to another Roblox Studio tutorial and today this video is going to be different because we're going to talk about is GUIs. Oh you don't know what a GUI is? GUI is a 2D user interface object and it's used to display from the player's screen and that is very useful for most of the games. But unfortunately some people don't know how to use GUIs well like not knowing how to clean their room properly. So I'm going to show you some of my tips of how I made my GUIs better. And yeah, let's go ahead and insert a screen GUI and a GUI object. Enjoy! So the first thing when I insert a GUI, I mainly look at the position and the size properties. And you may be wondering, why you need to look at them when you just drag and resize the GUI with our mouse? To be a bit blunt, I freaking hate dragging GUI objects. If I drag, yes it is useful, but the problem I see from my perspective is I see a lot of damn numbers. While looking at the properties, there are two tables. One is X and one is Y. Both X and Y have two children named Scale and Offset. Both of them have different behaviors, like Scale does like percentage to make DOIs easier, while Offset tries to like change it up a bit, just like being an assistant for Scale. Now this will lead me to my first tip, which my first tip Focus on scale. And now you may be wondering why I don't use offset. It is because it's kind of useless for me. <laughs> now to explain this, let's go to the size properties. I'm going to clear everything for a second. So if I can set the size scale for X and Y to 1, as you may notice, the GUI fills the whole screen. Okay, uh, ignore what you see I hear. Uh... So, if you want to center our GUI, let's go ahead and go to the positions uh, property, and then let's go ahead and set the both X and Y scale to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And as you can see, it's actually centered. But there's one problem, and you know what's the problem? The GUI object is not exactly centered, and that is not cool. Now that will lead me to my second tip, which my second tip is... Using Anchor Point. Anchor Point is the origin point for a GUI object. All GUI objects has an anchor point, so to find that, it is the bold squared one, and that is their anchor point. Now since we want our GUI to be exactly center, I'm going to go to the anchor point property, and then let's go ahead and set it to 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. And as you can see, it is exactly centered. Now when the anchor point kind of change, you will see like a slight change of positioning. But since that's a good thing, you may be asking, oh, since anchor point is useful, how do you use this in other directions and locations? You can do it here. 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 You can do it here, you can do it here, you can do it here, and you can do it here. Thank you very much. But however, this GUI feels a bit off, and it's not really convincing. And you know what that is? The GUI object is so cute, and we hate cubes. Why are you bullying me? Which that lets me to my third tip, which my third tip is... Applying UI Corner. UI Corner is a UI component that can round the GUI object's edges. But Anabot, why you need to use this when we can use a plugin named Roundify it can round the GUI edges too? Well, uh, friendship with Roundify is over. Now UI Corner is my new best friend. God damn it. Now to imply it, insert UI Corner in the GUI object and BAM! The GUI object has rounded edges. But what if? You want to change the size of the rounded edges. It's something I like to call. Oh. Corner radius is where you can change the size of the rounded edges. And it also has two children named scale and opposite. So both of them have like the same principles as X and Y's children. But here's what I use them for. Alright, so if I want to make rounded edges for my shop GUI or something else, I would change the value for offset. I can change any number like this or more. I'm just gonna leave it to 8 because why not. But if I want to make circle GUIs, like a full circle, 
I will change the value for scale. So I'm going to clear for offset and I'm going to change the scale to one. And there you go. Fun fact, it's actually a pro tip of how to make circles. Thank you very much. Now, since we added that, I want to check GUIs if it's suitable for PC and mobile. So I checked it by enabling device mode and uh, it's not really great. So, well, that will lead me to my fourth tip, which my fourth tip is applying UI aspect ratio constraint. UI aspect ratio constraint is a UI component that changes the GUI object sizing into an aspect ratio type size. Now to apply UI aspect ratio, so let's go ahead and insert an object and let's go ahead and insert UI aspect ratio constraint. And as you can see, it automatically changed its size into an aspect ratio size. The aspect ratio for this component is one, which I believe is like one to ratio of one. So it makes it like a square. Uh, so yeah, it will be useful for buttons and other stuff. You want to use that aspect ratio. But however, sometimes you don't want that. So here what I can use UI aspect ratio constraint for. Okay, so here is my GUI object and here's the size I want it for, like for my shop GUI, of course. Now I don't want like the screen size to frick around with our, our GUI sizing, which that just ruins the moment. So what I can do, let's go ahead and insert a UI aspect ratio constraint. And yes, it will turn into a square, which we still don't want. So what we can use this for? Well, we can go to the aspect ratios. I'm going to add like number to number or decimal to sub decimal. Just keep adding it one by one until something changes. So I'm going to change. Five minutes later. So if I see like the Y axis size change, like you can see it very closely. I don't know if you can see, I think it's like right here. As you can see it changes, it means it's ready to go. It's not exactly the same size as my original size. But it's fine, like you can see the before and after comparison. If I change like the screen size, it actually works in my opinion. But however, if your GUI is vertical size and if you want to use UI aspect ratio for, it's the same thing but inverse. So let's go ahead and insert a UI aspect ratio again. And it will go over here. So instead of adding up like this, that will not work. Instead, we're going to dock down a decimal. Not a number, but a decimal. I'm just going to dock down until the, instead of the Y axis size change, we're going to see the X axis size change. So if I see that, it's going, meaning it's done. And as you can see, it changes. So I'm going to dock it up again. And as you can see, it's done, ready to go. If I test it, it now works. But now we have our GUI frame. I want to use this for shop UA, but I might use this in another video. Anyways, we encountered a problem for making a shop UI. And you know what that is? We got a list of GUI objects in layout mode. Like we can't do this in hand mode. Well, it's complicated. So that will let me to my fifth tip, which my fifth tip is using these two components, UI grid layout and UI list layout. And yes, this tip has like two components in it, but I'll explain it one by one. Both of them have the same principles for layout, like they put layout in the title, but they have different behaviors. UI grid layout lays out GUI objects in multiple rows, while UI list layout lays out GUI objects in a single row. Since now we know the difference between them, let's go ahead and how the hell do we use them? Oh, easy, just insert this for in the frame and BAM! That's how you do it. Now first I'm going to show the UI grid layout first, and then the UI list layout second. So stick through that. Alright, so to test this layout, I'm going to insert a GUI object, so I'm going to put a frame. Now yes, you may be saying, it's not going to do anything. What the hell is this layout you're introducing to us? Well, if I click the GUI object again, and then press Ctrl D to duplicate it. You see the magic? You see this? Now if I duplicate the GUI objects, more it's going to add more one to one in a row and until the next object doesn't fit so let's go ahead and add 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 and if i do it again as you can see this one doesn't even fit because because of the size it's it's not fitting so it's going to add like a new row so yeah it's going to add a new row and 
the repeating process again. Now we can see the difference and when we add a layout component. So this is with UI grid layout and this is without it. Yeah. However, there are some properties that will make it even more useful. Now, as you can see, there is cell padding. I think padding is supposed to be for the spacing for it. So what I would explain to this is do this. As you can see, you it adds some more space. It adds some like more pad width. And then we have cell size, which will set every object inside this frame that has the UI grid layout. Every GUI object with the same size. Yeah, you heard that right. It's gonna be in the same size. So if I change some of the size, I'm gonna like change some like this. And you may notice it's changed, but you see everything change. But now to the bottom, horizontal and vertical alignment, which I believe are the most important ones. So as you can see the horizontal, uh, you can do this in the right side. And now I believe I would go to the center because the center is, well, good center. And the vertical alignment, uh, we can choose this in the bottom and we can just do it in the center. But the most important property in layouting is sort order. It is because it's good for organization. Sort order is layout order. But you may be thinking, what is layout order? Well, it's used for sorting and it's commonly used for UI grid or list layouts. If I look at the frame, as you can see, it has a layout order and every GUI object has a layout order. So I'm going to try to clear out everything. I'm going to try to demonstrate this. All right, so for this demonstration, we got a frame that has a UI grid layout and it has three GUI objects with different names and different colors. But however, they have the same layout order. So if I check each and every of the layout, you can see the layout order, it has zero, blue, it's zero, green, zero. Now, since the sort order is layout order, well, what we'll do is it will start low to high. So meaning, one of the GUI that has the highest layout order has to go first. But if the GUI object has the lowest layout order, it will go last. But however, all GUI objects have the same layout order, which makes it confusing to sort actually. So if I change one of the GUI objects layout order to one, and as you may notice, it immediately goes in front of the line. And if I change one of them to like let's say two, as you may notice, it also goes in front of the line. As you can see, blue has layout zero, one, and two, low to high. Now sort order has another type called name, which is sorting GUI objects in alphabetical order. Yeah, alphabetical order, right? And finally, we're gonna talk about is the UI list layout, which is used in a single row method. And it has similar properties from the UI grid layout but different so but first i'm going to show you some of them so if i do this it's go on a single row not making a multiple row but makes a single row right in the properties as you can see the padding is different but there's no size that's good so if i change like the padding or something so here's the scale and offset i would not use scale for some reason so if i do this bam spacing and the behavior it's the same thing you can just change the fill direction it's the same direction Bro, excitement, that, and yeah. And lastly, what I can do for GUI is go to the screen GUI's properties, which is now my sixth tip for this video. But how do we use these properties for the screen GUI? So what I would do is see this reset on spawn, the property where you can respawn and resets back to its original state. Yeah, disabled it. The reason why is I have some like complaints for my shop GUI video that the GUI object disappears and that is because Reset on spawn ruins the moment of GUI history. I'm gonna disable it for all GUIs. And for the last one I would like to present for you is display order. So this is commonly used if you have more than one screen GUIs. The reason I use display order is for my loading screen. Thanks to Avon Blocks for talking about that in the comic section. Okay, so here is my loading screen I, I use for my games. So if I see a, a GUI, screen GUI one, blocking the lone GUI is something like this. Yeah, we don't want that. So what we can do is we're going to go to the loading GUI screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to set their display order to one or more. And there we go. And there you have it. That's my tips of how to make GUIs better. 
and it works for all GUI object types like buttons, frames, scrolling frames, and more. Let me know in the comments or what do you think about my tips about GUI. But anyways, make sure you like the video if you enjoy it. Otherwise, subscribe for more Roblox Studio content, and I will see you in the next video. Merry Christmas!